Before I get into today's video, I just want to let you know if you're somebody who is new to my channel, I have a Facebook group for studying in Germany and studying in France. You can just go ahead and be part of either of the groups, wherever you want to study. Alright guys, welcome back once again. I'm sitting here with Bhuvan. Uh, Bhuvan is at the moment studying PhD, but basically we're going to talk about Erasmus Mundus scholarship for masters, what he got. I'm going to be asking you a few questions to get to know your journey, what kind of documents, what kind of process did you undergo, so that somebody who's studying bachelors right now probably would want to do the same thing what you did. And also we would want to know what mistakes what you did and you don't want others to do that. But before we talk all these things, uh, Bowen, why don't you give us a bit background about your where you come from, uh, what studies have you done and, and something which is which sets up the whole context. Go ahead. As you said, my name is Bowen. I come from Visakhapatnam, okay. Andhra Pradesh. Uh -huh. So I speak Telugu. <laughs> That's cool. Okay. And, Telugu uh, Radu. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I did my master's, bachelor's in geoinformatics. Okay, in, geoinformatics. Yes. Okay. In Andhra University. Uh huh. Uh, from 2007 to 2011. Yeah. And after that, fortunately, I got placed campus placed in the campus. Right. And uh, I got campus placement in Infosys. Uh huh. So I did my. I mean, I spent 25 months in Infosys as a system engineer. Okay. And in the meanwhile, while I was working, I applied for Erasmus Mundus scholarship. Right. For a course called Geospatial Technologies. Okay, we'll get to this, but yeah. uh, before we go ahead from here on, how much did you score in your bachelor's? Uh, I scored 8.98. Wow, that's a badass score. Okay, that's a really good score, man. Bhuvan, next question for you is, if someone is in last semester, mm -hmm. in last year of his or her engineering what advice do you have for them what kind of preparation they should start doing immediately it depends mostly on the deadline okay, of the different right. uh, programs makes sense yeah. because some of the programs at mm -hmm. least the one i applied for the it started in september uh -huh. but the deadline was in december the previous year oh my god so one like, year in, in advance so it's like almost like 10 months right right and uh, what did you do your masters in i did my masters in geospatial technologies it's like a program that is conducted by three universities okay one is in munster in germany uh -huh. second one is in uh, castellon spain uh -huh. and third one is in uh, lisbon portugal Whoa, man, full exposure of Europe. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> Let's talk about that day when you decided mm -hmm. that you would like to apply for this scholarship, right? I'm sure there was there was a lot of thoughts going on and a lot of preparations and a lot of countries were in your mind to go abroad. Yes. Before we proceed, I have a very uh, important question to ask him now is the document part. What kind of preparations you had to go through? Yes. But what if you wouldn't have cleared this scholarship? What was your alternative plan? Well, I was working in Infosys, as I mentioned before. Oh, you would have continued the yes. job? Yes. So I got okay. an onset offer to go to Edinburgh as per working as a contact employee for Royal Bank of Scotland. Uh -huh. So I would have joined there. Whoa, man! A guy with a plan B. Yes, okay. indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Bowen, just walk us through what documents I should have mm -hmm. before I apply on a portal. Basically, I was looking for some scholarships uh -huh. that pays for the entire amount, like a full financial assistance. Okay. So then I came across this Erasmus Mundus uh -huh. while I was in my last year of my bachelor's. Last year? Yeah. Okay. Then I asked them, okay, what exactly I need? ILTS, transcript, yes. letter of motivation, letter of recommendation maybe? Of course. You How need, many? You need two letter of recommendation, ideally. Okay. I mean, if you can get third person as well, More. then it's, it's better. Good. Yep. Okay. So usually it should be two academic. Uh -huh. And if you have work experience, then one from your manager or Makes the one sense. who is your supervisor right. at work. You can have yeah. these uh, extra things, right. like administrative things, like passport, whatever your extracurricular achievements are there, right. or your, if you have any publications, yeah. or if you have some certificates regarding, you know, to showcase that, okay, I have some leadership skills, right. I have some organization skills. Right. So um, you can just give the certificates as well. Uh -huh. So I have all these documents with me, sitting yeah. with me. I know that I was doing nanotechnology and now I'm going to do ma uh, masters in nanotechnology. Idly, mm -hmm. right? You did your bachelor's in geoinformatics and now... Masters in geospatial technologies. Correct. I'm sure you have given a good amount of thought before you chose that and yes. why you want to do it and that's what, depending on that, he wrote a letter of motivation. Yes, with Erasmus Mundus, uh -huh. you have three applications. Maximum. Maximum three applications. I think they have a list of like 35 to 40 courses. Okay. So you can shortlist the courses that pertains to your in field of interest. Right. And then you can choose the top three. 
Right, right. And you have to write a statement of purpose uh -huh. for each course separately. How did you apply? For all the three, they have a portal opened. Uh -huh. So first I had to fill an online application. Right. Then I had to upload the scanned copies of all my original certificates and passport uh -huh. and the CV. Uh -huh. And once on submission of that application, uh -huh. they asked me to post the entire thing to the main university, the coordinator university of the consortium. They asked you to courier? Yep. The originals or no, attested? The attested copies. And in that as attested copies, you have to give your transcripts that are, you know, signed and stamped by the university Mention. that is sent by in sealed covers. Okay, okay. When you uploaded these documents, when you filled out the application form, uploaded documents, everything was sent to them. Mm -hmm. When do you get a confirmation that now you're supposed to send us a courier? Uh, well, immediately we will get an acknowledgement. Oh, okay. That, okay, your documents are submitted. In order for us to consider your document, your application, uh -huh. kindly send a copy physical of it, copies. physical copy of it, to, to our office by this deadline. Most importantly, the success rate depends upon the country you come from as well, because they have particular scholarships for areas like uh, Middle East. Uh, Asia, war zone areas or so like uh -huh. some African countries. So we will be basically competing with for three scholarships, three to four. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. The rest of the countries. Right. And how long does the whole process go? Uh, well, in my case, I submitted in December. Uh -huh. I got a decision in end of February to March first week. For three to four months. Yes. So here's a just to put everything what you just spoke so far yeah. into more perspective. Okay. Right. Imagine. Mm -hmm. I am. I got in my bachelor's in 2012. Mm -hmm. Technically, I should graduate by 2016. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And I'm studying electrical engineering, okay. for example. In 2015, I should already apply for 2016. Am I, I correct? Indeed, yes. Okay, that's what I wanted but, to clear. Yes. Okay, go ahead. But there is a problem here. What? You have to start your master's in 2016, September, let's say September, August. Yes, yes. So you have to receive your uh, provisional certificate or at least your mark list for uh -huh. all your four years yeah. before you apply for the visa. Right, so how do I do that in that case? If you don't get it, it's going to be a problem. So then maybe there might be a consideration. The university might say that, okay, the guy has passed, the guy or girl has passed in the seven semesters. For the eighth semester, we are still evaluating things. No, but wait, here's a point. Yeah. You said in third semester, in third year, Yep. By then, I'm still at six, six semester. Exactly. So in that six semester, when I apply, I'm still left with one whole year. Yes. So, so I you will get the decision in the seventh semester. Right. Yep. Right. You have to apply for a visa in the eighth semester. That's going to be a problem. So until seventh semester, they will make judgment. Do do we give you scholarship yep. and admission or not? Yes. Ah. I mean, they will give the decision. The decision will be like three types. Okay, you got a scholarship. Oh, sorry, you got the admission uh -huh. and you will be supported by the scholarship. Right. Second thing is like, you got the admission. Unfortunately, we can we cannot provide you the scholarship. Then you self-fund that. Yeah. I mean, you will be you are in waiting list. Uh huh. They will give you the number in the number that uh -huh. of the waiting list that you are in. Uh huh. And say that okay, if you don't want to wait, if you want to join, you can you are welcome to join by paying the fees. Which oh. is pretty high. Oh, okay. <laughs> and the third part is okay. You don't have any chance to get a scholarship, uh -huh. but we are we are willing to give you admission if you are self-funded. And wow. fourth one is reject. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What advice do you have for people who are looking out for Erasmus scholarship? And if you just really have to keep this answer short, mm -hmm. how has this scholarship changed your life? Well, it changed. I mean, if not for the scholarship. I would have been still working in an IT company. Yeah. So I, w I would have accumulated by now like seven years of experience, probably looking at becoming a team lead or something. Okay. But now I'm publishing papers. I'm like, okay, I, I'm stressed about, okay, what new idea I have to come up with. Uh -huh. And also stressed about, you know, thinking about how to submit some things and how to finish the PhD. So it's like completely different thing. Right. So this, this is more interesting because you're always, you know, uh, faced with some challenges right so right. it's this makes life more exciting what kind of jobs do you expect now like where do you see your career heading well I'm doing my PhD in computer science uh, exactly in spatial crowdsourcing uh -huh. I am uh, expecting I mean there are two options for me after PhD I can continue in academia as a postdoc and then you know gradually 
प्रमोट माई सेल्फ जस्ट और देर इज सैन दर वे इट्स लाइक गोइंग इन डूर एडमिनिस्ट्रिंग एज अ पर्सन विद अ पी एच डी सो देर एट अप्लाई फॉर एन आर एन डी पोजिशन ओके और अप्लाई फॉर ए नॉर्मल जॉब विच सूट्स माई स्किल सेट मेक सेंस All right guys uh, that's it from our side thank you Muvan for coming on my channel thank you very uh, much i hope you guys uh, got a little bit of idea of course not everything uh, for everything uh, you you personally have to spend uh, your time into research into figuring out what do you want to do exactly what programs do you want to go because a lot of times of I've, i've personally observed as people are not clear into their own bachelors and a lot of times you guys will relate that you will question your own self like why am i doing this you know i'm not interested in whatever you're doing you know um and and when you plan of thinking masters um do not try to force yourself just because you did electrical engineering now you have to do masters in electrical um the earlier uh you decide which direction in life you want to head the better for you because there are times i have seen people they are 36 40 they're still like I don't know man I really like I don't enjoy my work. Um so again keeping this talk only restricted to the scholarship it has changed his life and many others. Um uh, I've come here personally from Berlin to see oh my god room full of nerds. Um <laughs> and, and and if not nerds then definitely smarter people than me. <laughs> All right guys on this note uh, I would like to say goodbye and if you enjoyed it hit that thumbs up button and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.